On Moments of Grace podcast during the month of February, we celebrate the rich stories and unyielding threads of African-American culture and contributions. Our beautiful country is an amalgamation of us all in the rich fabric of our nation. This month, during African-American History Month, we share our segments we call Threads in Our Fabric. In this episode, Dr. Butler speaks with abstract artist Patsy Johnson. She gives us a tour of her art gallery, which is also her home in Seneca, South Carolina. This is your host, Dr. Ray Jerome Butler, and welcome to A Moment of Grace. One thing that we all can have a part in is the beauty of, of art and expression. You, you know, I, I say even with I'm, I'm, I'm an author, so I write books and, you know, it's uh, for years I, I used to sing with groups and things of that nature. And the words are powerful, but the intent is even more expressional. Um, and my guest today is Miss uh, Patsy Johnson. And I met Patsy through my brother-in-law, uh, Sean, and he he was just elated with this young lady's artwork. And uh, she's, she's in South Carolina. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that um, Patsy's just waiting on the right person at the wrong at the right place to see some of her artwork. She is absolutely phenomenal. So, Patsy, how are you doing today? I am good, thank you. Good, wonderful, wonderful, and welcome to Moments of Grace. So, Patsy, you know, like I said, I, I've seen your artwork. How did you get into into the expressive uh, way that you paint? Uh, well, I've been uh, to be honest. I was in love with writing. Not okay. particularly writing a story or anything, but I just like just writing the letters and whatnot. Okay. I think about age six or seven. Okay. Just obsessed with letters and stuff. And then somewhere I just started doing cartoons and comics and it just went from there. Got you. Well, you know, most of us, I, I used to try to draw cartoons, but somewhere along the line, I stopped. <laughs> and your pa your passion increased. So... You know, from from the the writing at at age six and and just kind of doing cartoons, do you remember your first first actual painting where you said, you know, this this looks pretty good right here? Uh, I don't remember. Um, I did a lot of I would copy a lot of uh, comic strips because uh, we would get the, the Sunday paper, and I couldn't wait to get the comic strip so I could copy it. Um, wow. And uh, in class, when I was in school, I would get in trouble, uh, you know, doing cartoons as a teacher and student because I would have the students laughing. And uh, so I would get in trouble for that a lot. <laughs> Got you. Got you. And, and because it's, it's in your soul, isn't it, isn't it Patsy? Yes, it's definitely a gift. So I, I have to thank God for that. No doubt. Got you. Now, I know that, um, you know, as as we were talking, you're you're not just um, you, you're not you're not just a, a an artist, but you're also a student of art also because your 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 libraries and your house is full with books the, of certain artists, painters, um, expressionists and, and all of that. When did you get to the point that you felt you needed to, to maybe look at and study some other uh, expressions. You know what? Uh, when I was in high school, I didn't take any art classes. Um, so when I graduated, uh, I attended Anderson Junior College. Okay. I was on the basketball team, but I didn't want to major in PE because all the athletes were doing PE. Right. So I thought it would be different. So I majored in commercial art. Um, and art history was pretty boring to me. Not okay. until I got older that it became more interesting and I was I think as I'm getting older I'm becoming more hungry. 
I got you. I got not, you. So any book I can get or my hands on, I, hey, I, I got it. I like studying on my own uh, as opposed to like just being in a classroom and it, it, I don't have the stress, you know, I, I don't know how much stress to put on myself. I, I got you. Well, yeah, it, it, you know, do you, when you're, when you're painting and a certain stroke doesn't go right or uh, a certain color is not right, do you, do you frustrate yourself or do you co color over it or cover over it or, uh, or what do you do when there's mistakes or, or do you incorporate the mistakes in your in your artwork? Because, you know, sometimes I know there are some vocal artists uh, that say, you know, when they make a mistake, some of those mistakes turn out to be some of their masterpieces, you know. Exactly. exactly. Uh, when I when I make a mistake, uh, really, to be honest, I don't look at it as a mistake. OK. I look at it as an extension of another piece. Right. Wow. And turn it into something else. Um, matter of fact, that'll be a good title for a piece, uh, The Anatomy of a Mistake. Mm, I love that'll, that. Piece, that'll be a, good, a great title. I love that. And you've, um, you know, uh, you were sharing with us your 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 mother and, uh, and left you the, the home and your home actually is a is a is a um, an art piece itself you, you know every room has some type of expression going on in it uh share with us you know when you you know when did you first start that um you know uh, painting on the walls and putting artwork up and like i said from head to toe you know, from top to bottom your whole house is a, is is an artist's expression yeah i would get in trouble for marking on the walls too uh but when my parents passed, uh, they left me the house, and so the house is like one big canvas. Mm. So, uh, if I can, I'll yeah. just try to walk around. Well, I was hoping we would get a chance to see some of your artwork, definitely. Uh, I probably have to turn the camera around. Okay. Now, now, now right there in the in in yeah, that's that's great. We can we can start right there. Um, so express with us some of the pieces that we're looking at right there. You know, it's two pieces we're looking at with, it appears to be uh, one African-American male at top and, and some, some at the bottom. Clemson, I believe. Uh, this guy is Sammy Watkins at the top. Yeah, Sammy Watkins. Okay, okay. He has dreads. I use combs to represent his hair. So those are combs in the, in, 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 we can't really see it that well, but those are combs as his, his hair is dreadlocks. Yep. Wow. Wow. I don't know if you can see it now. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, we can. It's it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And then that's another piece. This is supposed to be the orange room. Okay. Okay. So, well, take us through the orange room. So you you are located near Clemson, South Carolina. So, and I'm a Michigan fan. So unfortunately, I got to endure this. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing with you, Patsy. So you did the uh, the the goals and everything there. The, the, w w share with us what that piece is. Uh, this is I tried to create a football field. Okay. And here's our paint too. You got Clemson and Gamecock. So I I hear you. I hear you. And so you have uh, the goals and and. Um, and uh, I see some crates behind that that are are painted. So, w w what are the expressions there, uh, right behind that gold line there, Patsy? Uh, really, it looks some. I just got some books, and uh, I collect wine bottles because I, I like trying to do a still life, and I'm studying glass, how to paint glass. So, so you never stop studying, even though you are. You know, I, I feel you're a very accomplished artist. You you never stop studying. You're still looking for um, expression, design, and and clarity and color and all of that. I guess. Yeah, I never stop studying. Never I think st if I'm studying. Then if, if I get bored with it, then uh, I I think that wouldn't be good. <laughs> got you, got you. And this is the blue room. Okay, and so let's let's look at some of those. So share with us. You just passed one that looked like it was a lemon. Uh, 
one piece. That, so ex, ex, share with us that piece there. That is that a lemon or, or what is that, my friend? Uh, this is uh, we were we had to pick an artist and copy a piece of their work and kind of like kind of do our own thing with it. Okay. And they had a write up about it in the paper. So. Oh wow. And uh, so, so that's. So it's just a piece that you painted. You, you just kind of expression off of someone else's work, but but it is absolutely beautiful. That is a beautiful piece. Uh, the the painting is called the the girl with the pearl earring. So this is the lemon with the pearl earring. I got so, you, I got you. This is the yellow room. Uh, well, let let's do this, Patsy, if you don't mind. Let's take a break, and then when we come back, I want us to go into the yellow room because you got some powerful pieces there in the yellow room. I've been in there. And I, I really want us to spend some time in the yellow room if we, if you don't mind, okay? Okay, that's fine. All right. This is Dr. Adrian Butler. We're here with our friend, Patsy Johnson, a, a, a powerful, powerful artist. And as you can see, she has different rooms, different colors and different rooms. And uh, we're getting ready to go into the yellow room right after the break. So we'll be right back after this break. And so we're back. This is Dr. Adrian Butler, and we're back with... Miss Pat, art artist extraordinary Patsy Johnson, and uh, she is she's taking us through her house, which is a as she as she puts it, it's a canvas unto itself, and uh, each room that that she has, she has the orange room, and we went through uh, the blue room, and to na right now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Patsy, we're in the yellow room. Is that correct? The yellow room. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And so, out of the yellow room, what's your what's your favorite piece, or do you have a favorite piece? You know, I know you know I know sometimes artists, like I say, I write books, and and I have to be honest, I have books that are my favorite that I've written uh, uh, some expression. But is there a piece that that is kind of your favorite out of out of the yellow room? Uh, I guess it would be uh, my dad's uh, truck right here. Oh wow, wow! And and so is that. Is is that a real uh, uh, license plate, or is that something you painted? I just I painted it on the truck. Uh, okay. He had a, a old Chevrolet truck, and and he liked the uh, the oil cans. If you can see the oil cans in the yeah, back. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And really, the piece is, you know, in memory of him. Uh, I tried to do a clear piece on this end. Okay. And then he unfortunately he had Alzheimer's, so it's getting kind of blurred as you go. Oh through. wow! So so the 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 piece kind of kind of is a it is a, a a catalog of his life as well from 1919 to 203. And so as well, life goes on, I got you. Pat, to you a bad girl. That that's 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 awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. This piece here is just dedicated to them because they were. The shoe represents hard work and uh, and we can parents. barely see it. What okay, the is that the a Bible and a shoe? Right, right. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So it represents hard work and uh believing in God. Uh that's also dedicated to both of my parents. Got you. And so I'm looking at a green is that a pear or what is that also in the painting, Patsy? It's a pear. Okay, how what's what is the what's the meaning of the pear? The pear is symbolic for me because uh, my mom, when she suffered a stroke, I always wonder why she kept a pear in her hand. So when you have a stroke, your muscles tighten up. Oh, okay. So she always kept a pear in her hand. Okay, okay, beautiful. So a lot of pears, so. Right, right. Uh, but this is the yellow room. And so you still have SpongeBob. Don't go out of the yellow room too quick for me now because we got SpongeBob. And now all of these are uh, pieces that you've painted, uh, SpongeBob and, and Barney Rubble. <laughs> so looks like you have a lot of fun with your art. I try. I try to, yeah. <laughs> got you. Got you. That is nice. That's nice. And I see a, a piece over there that looked like Abraham Lincoln over there in the corner. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln is my favorite president. Okay. Okay. I like and, him for the reason, so uh, I like that he was... Six four, he was self taught. Uh, I just like him for other reasons. I got you, and 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 I don't know if you I don't know if you you knew this little piece about Abraham Lincoln. You know when he was in the military, he was a captain, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, but uh, they busted him down to a private before he got out. 
Wow. So he, he was he was not a good soldier, but he definitely was an awesome president. So yeah. it, it's all about all about time and environment. Everything is not for everybody. Exactly. That's true. That's true. Well, you know what? I, you probably can't see it, but I don't know if you can see. Yeah, that. we can see that. Yeah. Um, but this is also Abraham Lincoln as a watermelon. OK. OK. And the slaves are the seeds. Oh, wow. Wow. And that wasn't the first time that he was assassinated. I mean, it was another attempt on his life. Exactly. Exactly. So, wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the <laughs> there we go. Now, you, you, you're getting into some of my favorite pieces now. I see you got Miss Grace Jones as well. I believe that's Grace Jones, isn't it? She's one of my idols next to Pam Greer. I got you. And and, and if I'm not mistaken, the hair, it, is the hair combs as well? The hair is combed. Okay, beautiful piece. You know, and, I was trying to start my own ism. We got so many isms, so I got combism. <laughs> That's as close to cubism I could get, so combism. I so, got you. I got you. Well, you have quite a few pieces with, with some combs, don't you? Yep, I do. Got Maybe you. I didn't want to do a show with just, just combs. Uh, and this is supposed to be a self-portrait of me. As, as ban but now, or now give us the meaning because the bananas and the the is that an afro or yeah the afro and the bananas and bananas is kind of like a shirt okay oh that is bananas. that is beautiful that's beautiful Patsy I wanted to say in all of the rooms mm -hmm. I have the shoes that represent the color of the room all we right. are going to take okay. a station break. When we return, Dr. Butler will continue his interview with expressionist and artist Patsy Johnson. The latest book by Dr. A. Jerome Butler is here. Queen or Concubine Being Worthy of Your Crown is one of the best books written by this prolific author and teacher. Dr. Tabitha Russell, CEO and founder of Inside Inspired Women Global, home of the Breakthrough Millionaires Academy, said, Dr. Butler's unique perspective on this issue is both enlightening and thought-provoking. He empowers women to strive for their purpose, to be queens rather than concubines. And Dr. Janet Bishop Nesbitt, Certified Life, Wellness, Grief Coach, Educator, Speaker, and Veteran, said about this book, God engineered you to be a masterpiece, to be phenomenal, and to be a queen. This book reveals biblically sound principles and other references that will unleash the greatness God has planted inside of you, equipping you with God's word to encourage and strengthen you along the way, to be worthy of your crown. You can order this life-changing book at www.drajrbutler.com. Again, you can order this life-changing book at www.drajrbutler.com. And remember, you are truly worthy of your crown. Dr. A. Jerome and Crystal Butler are the Senior Directors and Chief Executive Officers of the Grace Project Homes Incorporated announced that their initiative to address the national homeless crisis would hold their annual donors appreciation dinner and gala in Augusta, Georgia for the third year in a row. The keynote speaker is District 1 City Commissioner Mr. Jordan Johnson. Mr. Johnson, who has addressed the homeless issues in Augusta, appears to be a great candidate for this event since the homeless issue is in line with the core of his platform. The Grace Project Donors Appreciation will be held at Reconcile Christian Ministries, 2030 Lumpkin Road in Augusta, Georgia. The pastors are Bishop-elect Ricky and Pastor Francis Kidd. This is the second year the ministry has opened its doors to the Grace Project annual event. There will be four recipients of the Presidential Volunteer Award recognized at the At The Donors Appreciation Celebration. Again, the celebration will be Saturday, March 23rd, 2024 at 3 p.m. at Reconcile Christian Ministries, 2030 Lumpkin Road, Augusta, Georgia. This gala is free, but the space is limited, so you can RSVP at Eventbrite or on our website at www.graceprojecthomes.com. Thank you in advance from the Grace Project. Have a day of grace. <laughs> <laughs> I love Fred Crow. 
Beautiful, beautiful. So that he is. Was, he was six two. Okay. So Absolutely. I, I, I don't know if I told you, but can you imagine uh, Frederick and Abraham Lincoln if they was on the basketball team? Hey, they they almost couldn't be beat, could they? Because Abe was six four and Fred was six two. And I wrote a poem about it, and I'm thinking that if they were on a basketball team, they would probably be on the bench because they're so busy going back and forth with the, the bait. Okay. Great speakers. I got you. <laughs> they don't get no playing time. Right. I got you. I got you. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get a chance to hear that poem sometime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this right here is the the hallway. Okay, and and, okay. and that, now you had a you had a picture that was a mixture of, of Marilyn and somebody, wasn't it? This was Marilyn and Wayne Williams. Okay, it, it's really uh, good and evil. Oh wow! And from uh, Marilyn Manson. Uh, okay, uh, you just take an evil person and a a person that you think is good, and then you put the two together. Wow! Wow! So, and then this is the bathroom. Okay, <laughs> fish. <laughs> the, Snickers, the Snickers is my favorite candy bar, so this is a Snickers shark. Okay, <laughs> that is neat. That is neat, Patsy. That is so uh, neat. Okay, now we're in the uh, the green room, which is the living room. Oh, that you know, and I uh, that the the piece that you just showed. If you can turn back to that piece, because I think you were sharing with us the meaning of that piece when we were there. Uh, I was trying to create a ghetto, but I was trying to use teeth. Mm. You know, so the teeth is the building. You know, that's the cave, and then you have the um, the flossing threads, which is buildings, and there's yeah. kind of invaders, which is the blow pop. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, gates are open, and the brushes are supposed to be the gate and stuff. Uh, uh, but I was and trying I to create a ghetto. I guess the uh, the the road is a tongue. Right. I right. got you. Got you. Beautiful piece. What you put in my head is it's a challenge trying to take what's in my head and, and paint it. That's the challenge. I got but you. But I have fun doing that because there I you go. What it's gonna look like out of my head. And you and and the what you what you're what you're painting out of your head is you know we get an opportunity to be blessed by it because again. Your gift is a gift from God. So this is this is um, this is you and God conversing, and you're putting it on canvas for us to to uh, have an opportunity to to enjoy. And so I, I truly appreciate that because you got yes. some. You are definitely an artist extraordinaire. Well, thank you. But uh, this is the green room, and uh, now you and had another piece that, and I may be wrong, that was in there about Hitler, didn't you, before we go into the other room? Uh, well, this piece uh, with Hitler is right here. Okay. I don't know how well you can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Cause, yeah, because Hitler was the was the can opener, right? You know, I was going to throw away the can opener, and I had the front door open. The can opener was sitting on the floor, and the way the light was hitting it, it created a mustache. Mm. It looked like Hitler to me. So I put him on a stack of books, and he's talking to the cans, which is supposed to be the SS soldiers. Wow. And when they lost the war, uh, it was kind of too late. They realized that this guy was unplugged. So I got Wow. Okay. Patsy, get out of here. That's powerful. <laughs> wow. I love that. When you came into power. So. Right. Right. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Still didn't come out the way it was in my head, but that's. that's oh, it's what I beautiful. Got. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a blessed piece. I love it. I love yeah. it. And and so while you're going to the other room, I just want to share with the audience because you also paint some shoes for the Clemson players, don't you? Uh, I did that a few times. Okay. I, I wish they would call me and ask for some more shoes. Well, uh, well you ain't got to worry about them. I still waiting on my Michigan shoes so I can pay for them. So. <laughs> <laughs> and especially oh, this year, since they win in this year, it's, it'd be a good time. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is the last room right here. This is the purple room. So when you come in the purple room, you're coming into my brain. Ah, uh, wow. Gotcha. You know gotcha. I'm obsessed with Marilyn Monroe, so I do have a, a Marilyn Monroe wall. 
So, so what, what was it about Maryland that had you, intrigued you so? Because you've done some beautiful, beautiful pieces, some different pieces. You master with some other personalities. What is it about Maryland that, that really attracted you? Because, um, you know, she had such a short, tragic life. And, and beautiful lady did some great work on film. But, you know, in, in her life, it was, you know, some tragedy. So what, what, what attracted you so much to Maryland? I think what attracted me is we both were adopted. Okay, got you. <laughs> and um, she, she, she was smarter than people. Yep. She was more than just a sex symbol or whatever. Right, right. She, and she... Uh, I just think that um, she could have been something else, maybe if she would have lived longer, Vers uh, versus being a movie star or a sex symbol, you know. Right, but, right. Uh, she, he wouldn't let her get past that, but I think she could have been something else. Right. Well, you know, um, you know, Dolly Parton has played that role for years, and I think people are finally coming to understand how much of a businesswoman, how intellectual, and and how sweet a spirit she is, and uh, and that may be the same thing with Marilyn. You know, because like you said, during the during the time of her movies and all, people took her for granted. You know, she played the dumb dumb blonde, but. You know, like I always say, you know, what I do is not who I am, you know, <laughs> so, right. you, you know, so she was an actress. Go ahead, my and sister. I, and, and I think she, uh, I think she started out, you know, pretending like she didn't know much, but yeah. then she realized like, hey, I want people to know I have a brain. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, but that's the Maryland and I got my Afro wall of fame. All right. Now. All right. Yeah. And so share with me about the Afro, because, you know, that is a that's a symbol of of empowerment for our hair uh, as as a as a people. Um, my sister, I wanted my fro to be like my sister's, which is the green right up there. OK, I got you. And Bria, if if I could like make me make myself, I definitely want Pam Greer. And I got to have Mavis Stable. Okay, gotcha. And I see you got a black Marilyn up there with an afro. Yeah, black Marilyn. <laughs> That's probably how I would look if I redid myself. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And Nina Simone and Erica Badu. And wow. So who's yeah. behind the wall there, my sister? I see a brick wall there on the right. On, right. Go back to the right. I see a brick wall. So who's behind the brick wall? Uh, That's uh, Diana Ross. Diana Ross. Okay. Now, why'd you put Diana behind the wall? Uh, I guess she's just peeping. Uh, maybe she's uh, trying to get away from Michael. I don't I got know. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Afro Motown, puffs. Motown is calling like, hey, where you at? <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And also uh, to the right, you have the unknown soldier with the Confederate flag. Share with us about that, my sister. And You know what? Um, with that right there, I was thinking that both parties fought in that war, you know, blacks and whites. Right. And even right. some children and women. Yeah. So right. we would never know who they are. So I put that piece right there in the frame to represent the unknown. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Beautiful. I, a lot of people come in and say, well, what is that about? So. That's my answer right there. <laughs> Got you. But no, that's a beautiful piece. Powerful. You know if, if, if I died and went to heaven, I, I definitely want to meet these, these guys, you know. Got you. Got you. So, well, you know, the, um, the, the, the beautiful part of, your, of an artist is it's no holes barred. You know, you, you, you put it out there and it's left up to people to, um, it, other than what you share with them, it's left up to them to bring, uh, bring it into their own sphere, bring it in their reality and into right. their truth. And uh, so, Patsy, you, 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 I, we have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the tour. You got anything else you want to show us before we get out of here? I think that's it. That's it. <laughs> you have to have another thirty minutes. <laughs> well, I, I surely, surely appreciate it. You have a beautiful home. Uh, the expressions of of your room, all of the artwork and everything. Um, do you have any shows coming up or, or anything? And you may have some stuff you can't talk about right now. Any books coming out or, or anything going on? The only thing that's coming up is we got How About Them Apples coming up next year. And, and the show is about apples. Okay. And where so, is that uh, going to be located? It will be at the uh, gallery, uh, the Westminster Art Gallery. 
And so Westminster is in which state? Give us the state because we're worldwide, my sister. So Westminster, South Carolina. Okay, great, great, great. And and so you have a show coming up. Might coming up uh, in February. So I'm okay. trying to come up with some new pieces. Okay. I want to do some singers, you know, right. like uh, Howlin' Wolf and uh, Otis Reddy, some guys like that. Okay. And uh, I, I'm actually, um, and I can share this, I'm actually in negotiation talk with Otis Redding's um, manager. So, uh, yeah, so so uh, hopefully we can have him for African American History Month. So, But, but Patsy, beautiful home. Thank you so much for the tour. If people want to get in contact with you or if somebody want to get them some some Michigan shoes, wink, 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 <laughs> wink. <laughs> some some original Patsy Johnson's <laughs> artwork. How do they how do they go about doing that, Patsy? Uh, I don't have a website right now. I am I am working on that. Uh, okay. Me on Facebook. I'm Patsy Johnson on Facebook, and I am Sanford Eight Son on Instagram. Okay. Say that again. Uh, I'm Patsy Johnson on Facebook. Okay. And I am Sam Four. F-O-U-R, the number eight son on Instagram. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us, my dear sister. You're you're a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. And um, I I, I don't want to speak out of turn. Um, You know, some, uh, I believe in the future, uh, if it's possible, you know, uh, your, your home might be a, a destination for people to come and, and maybe to, to pay to come see, <laughs> you know, that would, you know, I'm working on it. that I'm would working. be, that would be beautiful. Cause I believe it is, uh, it's definitely a, a, a living canvas because it's out of, you know, you said that the bedroom was your mind, but the whole house is because <laughs> the whole house is your expression. So, you know. Yeah. So it's it, it, so you're you're a great artist and and we really have enjoyed the tour. Thank you so much, my sister. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. We've been talking with Sister Patsy Johnson, and you can see uh, in her artwork, in her her smile, in her life that everything is about expression. Everything is about expression. The expression that she has is is love and putting it on canvas and and sharing uh, what she has what she thinks about, what she thinks about life and trying to, to manifest that onto, onto canvas. So what I have to tell you all is this, find your passion. I truly believe passion produces power. If you can find your passion, find that one thing that, that you're good at, doesn't matter. You can be good at several things, but find that one thing that you know is God's purpose in you. For Patsy is painting, you know, for you, it may be writing, it might be singing, it might just be raising your children. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, some of the greatest the greatest people in the world to me were some, some parents and grandparents because they raised great, great people like Patsy's parents did because there's a legacy that is left behind. So with that said, find your purpose. Find that place of love. Find that place of hope. And again, we thank you all so much. And Patsy, thank you so much for being here with us. And remember, audience, we'll see you next time. Remember, love life, love God. And keep the light on. We'll see you next time on Moments of Grace.